Hey everyone, hopefully you're having a good day. My name's Andy, my channel's Finding Value. Uh, today we're gonna talk about solar. I saw some people comment in the, in the comments section. Hey, what about solar? It look, it's starting to look pretty good. What's, what's my opinion on it? Uh, I don't know as much about solar. And the one thing that trips me up is that if we have a commodity boom, and it's as big of a boom as I think it's going to be, the input costs for solar are gonna skyrocket. Uh, these companies, I know they don't, they already don't make a lot of money. I mean, some do, but uh, they are pressured by their input costs. And it's going to filter its way through this commodity boom and, and increase the price of solar quite dramatically. And I don't know how competitive solar will be if all of its input costs go skyrocketing higher. Um, and there's going to be mineral shortages, I think, in the future as well. So I don't know. I know money's going to go at solar. I know it's going to go there. It's probably one of the largest growth areas that I can think of because energy is incredibly important and no carbon producing energy is very important. And I don't consider solar to be renewable. I don't consider wind to be renewable because renewable, they for surely get their energy from renewable sources. But the thing, they aren't renewable themselves. So you're really just trading off an environmental problem, a climate problem for an environment, an environmental problem. Uh, because these things are going to have to be replaced every 10 or 20, somewhere in that range years. So, but I'll go in, I'll, I'll look at the charts, give you my financial opinion. It's only an opinion. Please don't use it as advice. So here we go. This is solar technical analysis. Here we go. So what I did first was I compared it to Ethereum's chart, uh, which is this big move uh, over time. And this is the this is the uh, solar ETF TAN TAM. I'm not talking about the the melanin in the skin. I'm talking about Invesco Solar. And what I think's going down is we 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 pull back here. I think we we've got this long accumulation base phase. And I think we are right where the arrow is at, just like all of the other, like right in this dip here, just like all the other uh, energy companies. And if that's the case, solar would be a, a great spot to invest in. And I'm seeing it across a lot of them. Here's Sun Power Corporation, the star and the arrow on the left-hand side. You draw it across, it broke out, it came back, and, and we're right where the arrow is. This is where the arrow is pointing down right here. We're coming back and, and testing. And if that's the case in the long-term picture, solar is going to be an incredible investment, probably. We're seeing it also in Canadian solar. It's the same breakout back test, and we're probably going to launch higher. Uh, we've got Beam Global, another one that's doing it as well, breaking out and then coming back. Uh, we've got now, I put Tesla in here just to look at Tesla. Um, where the arrow is at, this little pattern here, almost looks like it could be this little guy here. But it could also <laughs> be just as, as equal as this over here as well. Here's Vestas Wind. I've got, I've got the line drawn in here, kind of breaking on up, going sideways. This one's a little bit more difficult to read on, on, and figure out where it's at exactly. Uh, here's Beam Global, uh, October 13th, looking at the downtrend line. We are coming on up. We've got some good buying pressure. We just have to break the downtrend line. And then I think it's game on. And I, it very well could be game on for solar. And here, this is Beam. Uh, Sun Power, this one also. Let me draw on a line here. I mean, this thing looks like it's broken and it's moving up. Pretty, pretty clear is uh, pretty clear to me, if you ask me, that this thing looks pretty dang good. There's your break, and then we're moving on up. Uh, I, I do in one of my accounts have Sun Power and Canadian Solar. If you want to know, uh, I do not have the TAN ETF anymore, but I do have some of my um individual companies that i still own uh here's canadian solar and there's the downtrend line it's trying to break out of its downtrend uh, we've got fuel cell this isn't necessarily solar but it is one i watch 
Uh, and this one here looks like it broke and back tested and we're heading higher. Uh, so this one looks really good for a long-term hold um, as well. This one looks good. Uh, we've got Plug Power, which is another one that I've been watching. Uh, it's moving on up. It, it jolted higher. Uh, I was super lucky to buy it in here. Um, I really what I so when you look at these patterns, this one came down. It put this humongous bullish engulfing pattern, which is this day here, and engulfs the one before it. It's a massive reversal pattern. It reversed higher, but there were st sellers still in this stock. It it was still wanting to sell off. It sold off, but it bounced. Here's your bounces that I talk about in a consolidation phase that I look for. Bounce, bounce, bounce. And it's it's right above where this reversal point is. Sometimes it's at sometimes it comes at it, above it, or below it. But this is breaking to the upside. It looks it looks good. Plug power and here's Tesla. I just threw this in for the for a mix. It does look like we have an ascending wedge, and I don't know which way this thing's gonna break. It could break to the upside, downside, not exactly sure. And Tesla still basically eludes my my complete rational thought of how this has any sort of valuation where it's at <laughs> in terms of PE multiples and everything. Uh, here's Daku New Energy. This one broke to the upside. You could see a retest here where it pulls back and retests. We got that black candlestick and it's a nice small uh, opening and closing contracted candlestick where it could come back. If it comes back, I would be a buyer for DQ anywhere near this trend line, somewhere in like the 60s, low $60 range. And that's what I have uh, for solar. I didn't like use all these different companies, but uh, I don't know as much about solar. I don't feel as comfortable holding on to it. I always use valuations in my background. Solar is more dependent, I think, on policies, rules, regulations, uh, all of that stuff, credits, and sometimes I get a little wishy-washy there. I get a little scared uh, because it's, it's not a true, you know, free market supported solution. And we don't have a solution to really store electricity. So there's that deep down inside of me. I'm just like, I don't know. <laughs> um, I do think it'll make a lot of money. And these things are incredibly volatile. I mean, they move all over the place. If you get it right. This is going to go somewhere very fast. It's it's almost like it, it's the new uranium almost renewables because they move so volatile. Uh, a lot of the smaller renewable companies and and they're they're, they're gonna they're gonna move. Uh, I just hope it's in the upward direction. <laughs> and that's um, I do al I have allocated some money to it and I still have some. It's not what it used to be. So uh, that's my opinion on it. You guys subscribe to the channel, give me a thumbs up, and thank you for listening. This is Finding Value.